questions and then we're going to dig in a little deeper, but um, I'm inspired for sure. I want to turn to Dr. Najib right now and, and, and make it take it a little more personal again and ask, how did you utilize your experience as a STEM professional and a member of the African diaspora to connect back to Africa and advance STEM on the continent? Thank you, Dr. Yawood. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am uh, Moroccan-American. And if you didn't know, Morocco just made it to the semi-final. <laughs> viscerally, and apologetically African. That's an answer to the previous panelist. <laughs> now, that's out of the way. Um, I, I came to the US in search of knowledge. I wanted to become an aerospace engineer, and there was no training in space engineering or aerospace engineering in Morocco. So this is why I left my home country, and um, I came to pursue a PhD here in the US at the University of Michigan. And in the process, I realized that if I wanted to go home, I would not have a job because at the time, there wasn't a space industry that was developed enough to absorb new graduates like me. So just like my co-panelists, my passion shifted from <laughs> space engineering to science policy. Why there isn't a research ecosystem to absorb new graduates who want to go back home and build the capacity in their countries. I know we talk about climate change, we talk about biodiversity, agriculture in Africa, water scarcity, those are important issues. But research excellence and cutting edge uh, research topics are not the monopoly of the global north. Mm. Africa can also, uh, they have the human capital to make uh, strides in artificial intelligence, in material science in other topics. So um, after I graduated, I, I uh, came to the National Academy of Sciences, where I work right now. And the National Academies provide evidence-based advice to the US government uh, on all matters related to science, engineering, and medicine. And we developed new programs at a sophisticated high level to engage with African researchers and African institutions, build capacity, but also learn that there are programs that are based on intellectual reciprocity that are fully bidirectional. Mm -hmm. And they involve the diaspora. The diaspora showed up. In fact, it was bottom up. It was driven by the diaspora who came to us and they said, you have programs with Germany, with Japan, with China. Why not with Africa? We're here. We want to help. We want to learn. We want to engage. And I think this is where the strength of the diaspora comes from, is that they are willing to go the extra mile, that they have the cultural competency to engage. And they are a strength. We talk a lot about brain drain, but now we are also at a level of brain circulation because the diaspora is willing to go back and engage and help lift up the continent. And just closing back where I started, the most successful team at the World Cup, Morocco, <laughs> has the <laughs> highest number of foreign-born players. And there is a reason for that. So I think there is strength there. There is, it's a resource, it's an opportunity to tap, not just in football slash soccer, but also mm -hmm. in STEM. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.